Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever parts of the world you're watching me from. Welcome back to our Addiction Recovering Workshop, the proven and safest formula to overcoming any form of addiction. Welcome. You know, we ended the other lesson by asking some of us that we want our addiction story, most especially sexual addiction story, to be shared on our social media platform to make a video or write your story and send to us as a PDF so that we can share it on all our social media platforms. That's if you're comfortable with it. Um, your addiction story, what you struggle with before this workshop and how this workshop has helped you thus far to overcome your addiction. So we want you to share your story with us. You can make a video or write your story as a PDF, send to us and we'll share on all our social media platforms. I'm waiting for that. That was your assessment for the last uh, lesson. And in our last module, we dealt with um, overcoming sexual addiction. We dealt with that in detail. This module, we are going to be looking at social media addiction and substance addiction. So the lesson one is going to be social media addiction and all that you need to know about social media addiction. And then we are going to deal with substance addiction. I want you to stay true till the end, most especially if you are dealing with substance addiction. The person who is going to be speaking to us about substance addiction is so experienced and anointed, and I wouldn't want you to miss any of the juicy details that the Lord has for you this season. So welcome back to this workshop. I love you. Once again, I love you. God bless you for being here. So now, we'll dive right into our lesson for today, which is social media addiction. What are we going to be looking at? So we're going to be looking at social media addiction. What is social media addiction? How do you know you are addicted to social media? What are the effects of social media addiction? And what is the solution to social media addiction? We're going to keep it simple, straightforward, and short so that you can really get the value and put it into practice. Social media addiction is a behavioral addiction that is defined by being overly concerned about social media, driven by an uncontrollable urge to lock onto or use social media, and devoting so much time and effort that it affects other important areas of your life. Remember that when we talk about addiction, we always say that how you know you are addicted to anything is when these things start interfering with other important areas of your life. When you're supposed to do something important with your time, you dedicate the time to doing this thing, and when these things start, start um, having a, a psychological or physical effect on you. That is when you know it's, it, it's addictive or it's becoming an addiction. So many people use social media. Schooling through social media is, it has become an increasing popular activity over the last decade. The truth is that so many people school through social media. That is the truth. All of us use social media. Everybody, you know, if an average young person is connected to more than three social media platforms, and so many people do businesses on social media, so many people have ministries on social media, and I think this workshop is also coming to you through social media. So there is nothing absolutely wrong with social media in itself. A lot of people who use social media are not addicted to it, but a small percentage of people get addicted to social media and use it excessively until it starts interfering with other important parts of their lives. Some people don't even know that they are addicted. Some people don't know when it becomes addictive. So that is what we are going to be learning in this um, lesson. Now, how do you know you are addicted to social media? At what point should you reduce your use of social media? How do you know you are addicted to social media? Number one, when you sp spend large amount of time on social media. When you spend large amount of time on social media. Number two, when you think about social media often, when you are not using it, you know, when you are not using social media, you are supposed to be doing something else with your time. But you keep thinking about social media even when you are not using it. When you spend less time doing other activities or hobbies, not spending time with others in order to use social media. You begin to isolate yourself from others in order to use social media. You begin to reduce the time you, 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 you engage in other activities or hobbies just because you want to use social media. So people can stay around family and when there is nothing, even there is nothing important they are doing with their social media they are just they are just scrolling up and down somebody said that they that 
the, if he's speaking to you and you are on social media, you are addicted, you know, it's funny, but that, that might not completely be the truth, but he considered it that way because he feel like when you are having someone, when you have someone in front of you speaking to you about something, most especially something important, you should be able to drop your phone. So he said, if you cannot drop your phone to listen to at least a one hour conversation, you are addicted to your phone or you are addicted to social media. Social media begins to interfere with your work, with your relationship, with your school and all other important activities when social media began to, begins to interfere with your work begins to interfere with your relationship you cannot stay and have a meaningful conversation for two hours three hours four hours without social media you are in church and there is this urge to pick up your phone and check what is happening on social media social media begin to interfere with your work begin to interfere with other important activities you know you are addicted uses when using social media as a way to cope with negative emotions or problem when social media become the thing you used to cope with negative emotions or problems in your life you are becoming addicted to social media you are finding joy there becoming when you become rest, uh, restless or trouble when you are unable to use social media how do you know you are addicted it's what we are dealing with you know you are addicted when you become restless or trouble when you are unable to use social media there was a time um I, I, a cousin of mine just came to surf in my uh, in this part of the world and she was living with me you know and i was amazed at how she used social media from morning till night she's on social media if you see her drop her phone probably she's sleeping in the middle of the night, you wake up and start scrolling through social media. And then I follow her on social media and I find out that she's not doing anything serious. Sometimes for one week, she has not posted anything online. She's not doing anything serious, anything impactful, whether to her life or the life of others online. But she's always scrolling through. She knew all the juicy information or news that is going around the world because she's always on social media, both negative and uh, positive news. And then it goes to a point where whenever there is no power, and probably they will just have to stay for a period of time before they bring a light you know that's what what happened in this part of the world she would just carry her charger get out there and start looking for anywhere she can get power so that she will charge her phone she doesn't just feel comfortable when her phone is off she doesn't feel comfortable when uh, she's not on social media for a second or, or, or for, for a minute she will feel as if the whole world is moving forward and she's just left behind because she's not on social media it became an addition for you she did not know but when people started complaining that you are always on social media there was a time we went to church this will sound very funny but yes we went to church she removed her shoes and she was sitting down somewhere using her phone when we came with the car that let's go home she stood up she was still using her phone she forgot her shoes got into the car and we came all the way home it was when she wanted to come out of the vehicle she remembered that she's not putting on shoes you see it was it's that bad and there are so many young people like that you put a book in your front to read for an examination you have a course you want to take online and as soon as you get there say let me just check my instagram and then five hours you are on instagram and you end up sleeping we know people who walk into an examination hall unprepared because of social media when you don't have the power to say okay I'm, I'm not using social media now i want to pray or i'm not using social media now i want to study a book or i'm not using social media at this point or in the next three hours because I want to take my course online when you don't have the strength to do that anymore there is a need to check if you are already addicted to social media what well, social media and your mental health social media and your mental health human beings are social creatures we need companionship of others to thrive in this life and the strength of our connection has huge impact on our mental health helps in today's world many of us rely on social media platforms to find that connection while some may be beneficial it is important to remember that social media can never be a replacement for real world or real human connection we all need that human connection it's very important to our mental health because we are social creatures and then many of us rely on social media to get this connection now as i stated before Good things happen on social media. People meet good friends on social media. So people have met their spouses on social media. So we are not saying that it's completely bad, but we are saying that no matter how good a thing is, when it starts interfering with other areas of your life, there will be a need to stop and check if this is becoming an addiction.
You understand that? So that is what we are saying. So please remember that your connection, no matter how you connect with people on social media, that connection cannot replace the real world connection. All right? Now, what are the effects of social media? What are the effects of social media? Number one effect of social media is depression and anxiety. Social media lets you see carefully the selected best parts of everyone else's lives. They allow you to see carefully the selected parts of everyone else's life, which you dare compare with the negative in your own life. Now, comparing yourself with others is a sure way to anxiety, unhappiness, and depression. That is what it is. Most of the pics you see on social media are not real. Some of them are, but some are not real. And most of the time, because you are addicted to social media, you are trusting social media for your um, um, connection, companionship, and everything. People are only showing the selected positive areas of their life. They only show you what they want you to see. The truth is that nobody comes to, to social media to show you what they don't want you to see. They will take that picture and edit it perfectly before they put it out there for you to see. That's the truth. So all most of these things are stage managed. And then you look at these things and begin to compare them with your own real life. And comparison is a sure way to what? Unhappiness, depression, and anxiety. Another effect of social media is cyberbullying. We've been talking about this like over and over again. Social media enable uh, wicked people to hide behind their keypad and tear into other people's life. Some create fake accounts, some victims end up in severe depression and even driven to suicide because of comments they receive on social media. Now, it's so wrong what people do when they know that their faces are not seen. People hide behind their keypad and say a lot of horrible things to other people. And then if you depend on social media, that's why we say do not allow social media connection to replace your real life connection. If you depend on social media for your validation and then maybe you put a picture out there, you have 50 comments and 40 of them are negative. You, it can drive you into depression and even suicide. There is a popular person, I would have loved to mention her name. She, has, she is a popular uh, gospel singer and also a daughter of a pastor. I follow her on social media. She has a very unique way of dressing. Sometimes when I go to her comment section, what I hear people say about her outfit, her, pers her person, the way she dresses and her person uh, generally, I feel bad. They are not saying them to me, they say them to her, they say them in her comment section on Facebook and Instagram. But when I just go there and read you, I feel bad. And then sometimes, just imagine that this young lady do not have a real life connection or a real family love where somebody is telling her that you, you, you are beautiful, you are outstanding, you don't have to be like every other person. If this young woman does not understand this thing and then she's depending on social media for validation, that thing can quickly drive her into depression and even suicide. So cyberbullying is one of the effects of social media. Now, fear of missing out, for more. Fear of missing out. Fear of missing out is a phenomenon that becomes prominent around the same time as the rise of social media. Unsurprisingly, it's one of the most widespread negative effects of social media on the society. All right? I remember I told the story of my cousin that we just, she can do anything to charge her phone, anything. That as at that time, now she has really changed. She actually came to understand that this thing is addictive. So now she can even sometimes she deletes her social media, you know, just delete, just get herself out of those platforms and she stay for weeks. Now, you know, she'll tell me, I want to study, I want to do something with my life, I want to do take my course for two months, for one month, for uh, uh, 21 days, and she stays out, out of social media. And she does that now, so she now has control over it. But then there was no control. She can do anything to charge her phone because she feels like if she's missing out. She feels like the whole world has gone ahead of her in the one hour, 30 minutes, 20 minutes that her phone is not on and she's not on. And her phone was always off. Like, if there is no power, if her phone is not connected to light, just give it like one hour, the phone will be dead because she's always online from one social media platform to the other. Always watching videos, always opening links, just always online. You see that? So... <clears throat> She usually feels like the whole world has moved ahead of her. 
just because she's not on social media at that moment. Fear of missing out is just what it sounds like. A form of anxiety that you get when you are scared of missing out of a positive experience that someone else is having. For example, you might constantly check your social media to see that someone is having more fun than you. And that's exactly what causes fear FOMO. That is fear of missing out. Right? So another effect of social media is unrealistic expectations unrealistic expectation social media form unrealistic expectations of life friendship and relationships in our minds many of us i cannot even overemphasize on this one you know relationships that they showed us on social media that we are perfect that after two months these people are filing for divorce and just tearing themselves down on social media you'll be like hey hello last time he was the best thing that happened to me and that was just too much ago. You see? So this thing happened. I, I, I would have loved to mention them, so I don't want somebody to call me out. A lot of them. If you are active on social media, at least you go to social media at least one hour, two hours a day. You will know what I'm talking about. A lot of them. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. She's the best that's ever happened to me. She drew me closer to God. She is my, uh, sorry, he's my king. She is my queen. She's not like other women. She is this. She is that. And then two months down the line, one month down the line, two weeks down the line, they're tearing themselves down. He, 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 does, he, does, he has just one daughter. His mouth smells. Uh -uh. I thought two weeks ago he was the best thing that ever happened to you. <laughs> All right. So now, this is from unrealistic expectations. We see people who end their real life relationships because they are comparing it to what happens on social media. And some of these things are not real. All right, so it forms on realistic expectation. Ranging from thinking another person's relationship is better than yours, thinking another person's job is better than yours, thinking another person's business is better than yours. For example, I'm here making this video. If you see the background, it's so beautiful. It's just a small portion of, uh, 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 of a building that you are seeing. You don't know if the rest is even, um, I don't know what to describe it. You don't know what it is. All right, I can make it a habit to always stand in this beautiful part of the house to make videos for you. And then you just conclude your head that this girl is living in one mansion. You may not know what it is. So people only show you what you want to see on social media. They show you their offices. You know their cleaners that will go to their boss's office when the boss is not around to make videos. And then they post it on social media. You saw that this girl used to be my classmate. Now look at her big office. Now I'm not saying that people are not winning for you. There are people that are winning for you. But then, trust your own process. Alright? Do not compare yourself with anybody. Trust the process. You will get there. You are doing just fine. Stop comparing yourself with other people. So, all realistic expectations that people who end relationships work out of their jobs because they think another person is doing better than me. They work out of their job because somebody promised them a better job than theirs and they see the person on social media posting with different cars so they believe the person is doing pretty well so the person can actually connect them. And then when, sometimes when they get connected to what the person is really doing, it becomes like a shocker. Alright? So while you look great on the, while it's look great on the surface, these people might be in massive debt. Like I have experienced this firsthand. People who buy clothes on credit, take cars on credit, stay in houses they cannot pay for just to impress on social media. So when, while these things look very beautiful in the outside, most of these people might be in massive debt. They might be just desperate for likes and comments. And then they go out of their ways to do this thing. I know young ladies that sleep with men just to use their rooms to make videos or just to use their room to present or form or take pictures as if it's their, their, their own houses on social media. So every time they want to go and use a guy's room, the guy will say, okay, they submit their own body to do that. Just to, you know why? So then you'll be there in your own little house or your own big house or your own level that the Lord has placed you for now and you are killing yourself. Some are fighting with their significant other, but they will still uh, load up their social media pages with heavily staged photos. I've said it before, you know this thing now. It's all over. You know people that, you know, they really have this uh, um, couple goals on social media. They are, they are, they are your, 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 your couple inspiration, your role model, your mentors and whatever. And then you'll be shocked. The day they will come out and say, see, this is not the way you think. 
One simple way out of this mess is for everyone to quit lying on social media. But it's simply not going to be possible. That's the truth. No one is going to stop. Everybody wants the likes. So everybody, most especially influencers, they want the likes. They want to cash out. They are making millions out of this. So they are not going to stop. Okay? So you have to just kill that addiction. That addiction, this addiction rather, that is creating the unrealistic expectation in your head. You have to just have to deal with it on your own. You have to just build a, a healthy habit around your use of social media. And if you know that this is going to affect your mental health, log out. It's not by force. Alright? So another effect of social media is negative body image. Negative body image. I may go to tell you that this affected me at some point in my life. Because I'm, I'm really someone who likes to look good. And I love it when other women look good too. If you are a woman that pays attention to details, your body, everything, I love it. If you, you, you do that, you know, even though I, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I just love it when a woman or even a man, anybody, I love it when people look good. You know, generally, you know what to wear, what fits you, and then you wear it. You don't just go looking shabby. You don't just... I don't like it when most, especially women, don't pay attention to their looks at all. And now this is not like go and buy wear designers. I'm talking about you just knowing what fits you, and then you wear it. You don't just wear anything and get out there. So I'm someone who loves when I see people look good. And I also pay attention to how I look. You know, I don't appear out there just anyhow i try to pay attention to my looks so now this negative body image affected me at some point because it got to a point where you know everybody is so beautiful on social media yeah you know they all have flat tummy they all have you know their skin is uh you know glowing and everything so it, there was a time in my life i i spent heavily on slim tea i spent heavily on Flat tummy tea. I starved myself at some point because I wanted this perfect body. I don't know if there's anything like that, Seth. Do you understand? I, that, like this is my experience firsthand. I spent, if you go to my room right now as I'm talking to you, there are a lot of abandoned slim tea. Sincerely, if I have the opportunity, I will show you. Abandoned slim tea, abandoned flat tummy tea that I bought, you know, good amount, I spent good amounts of money to purchase. Why? Because I get, and the truth is, let me just say the very truth. Some of this um, body I see on social media, or I used to see on social media and fall in love with, I've not really seen someone with such body in view life. There was a, a picture that trained recently of a celebrity. Um, the, 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 the celebrity took a, pic, a, a photo of herself when she was going for an event. You know, it's all edited and everything. And then the perfect body was just all there. And then she put it on her social media platform. Then some hours later, a video from that event surfaced on social media. And it was like opposite. <laughs> the tummy wasn't as flat as what we're seeing in the picture. The, if the, cloth, the, the dress wasn't as fitting. And, you know, the figure eight wasn't like, like as loud as what we saw in the picture a few hours before. You understand? And I know that this negative body image is affecting a lot of youth. Seeing many people who are supposedly perfect according to societal standard on a daily basis makes you conscious about how different you look from those pictures. When you see them on a daily basis, perfect body here, perfect body there, it makes you a few, it makes you um it makes you conscious of how different you look. Sometimes people, I see people who start hating their own body. I see people in our level, people right now who are saving money, they will tell you that if I get richer, the first thing I will do is just to go for, you know, surgery, just adjust my body, do this or do that. That is their life goal right now because of what they see on social media. It's really important to remember that one wakes up, no one wakes up every day looking like a supermodel. And many people go to great lengths to get that body. You are beautiful just the way you are. See, most especially women. We are the ones who suffer this thing. The truth is that no one wakes up every day looking like a supermodel. The truth is that some of these things you see on social media, when you see it in real life, it doesn't look like it. That's the truth. And I just want to tell you, in case no one has told you today, you are beautiful 
just the way you are. Another effect of social media is unhealthy sleep patterns. People who use social media, I want to use my cousin for example again. There are days I should wake up and walk to the, the, the where she, she's sleeping and then I'll see that she's just sleeping on her phone. So she was on social media that so long and then she just slept off. Just, so she just sleep on her phone. Sometimes she's sleeping, you know, somehow. And sometimes she sleeps very late and she'll still need to wake up early for work. You understand? So when you're addicted to social media, one of the effort, effects, rather, is unhealthy sleep pattern. Isolation and loneliness. It's another effect. Isolation and loneliness. It's another effect. When you are addicted to social media, you isolate yourself. You can be in the family house, everybody's just still laughing at everything. And you see one person in one corner just pressing their phone. Two hours, three hours, four hours, they're just there. Every conversation, everything that is happening in the house is like none of their business. They're just there enjoying themselves in their phones. All right, isolation and um, loneliness is another effect of social media. Now, what is the solution? What is the solution? Maybe as I've been talking, you, you just figure out that, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. This thing is affecting me. This thing is affecting me in this way, that way. Um, and you want to just get the solution. What should I do to come out of this thing? Oh, I never knew I was addicted to social media. I thought it was just healthy the way I use social media. But from what you said today, I kind of understand this is becoming too much. It's excessive. It's not like within the normal range that everybody uses anymore. So what should I do? Number one, do a social media cleanse at least once a week. Where you stay off social media for at least 12 hours and focus on other important areas of your life. This is like the easiest one. I do it too. I do it too. Especially if I have something I want to do, something really important. Sometimes I just lock out of all my social media platforms, all of them. And then I focus on what I want to do. Sometimes one week, two weeks, and then I, I just come back. All right. Then sometimes I do it just once in a week. Even if there is something you are doing on social media, even if you have a page that you are making impact on social media, you can, you can schedule how you post when you come back to check your post and engagement and reply. You can just schedule, okay, I will spend just three hours on social media today or just four hours on social media today because there is something important you are doing. I'm not talking about those that screw up and down endlessly. I'm talking about those that probably have a business on social media or you have a ministry or you have a, something of impact you are doing on social media. All right, but then if you see that it's becoming too much, you can just take a day out, just stay like 12 hours and focus on other things rather than social media. Now, cut back on how often you check your social media by limiting yourself to checking only twice a day. Yes, you can do that. Even if there is something important you are doing on social media, you can cut down on the use by checking like twice or three times a day. Set a time for yourself. Just the way you have your to-do list if you were going to the office to work. If your office is on social media also, you can have a to-do list. In the morning, from social time to social time, I'm going to make social so posts in three or in three platforms. And then I'll come back to social time to check the engagement, who has come in, who I need to reply to, who I need to respond to. And then when I respond to them up to this time, I will drop my phone and focus on this, that, and that. And then when I'm done, maybe before I sleep, I'll still check in to see the engagement and everything. You don't sleep there. You don't stay there for morning to night just because you are making impact on social media. Cut down on how often you check. And those of you that screw endlessly, please, you don't even have, this one I'm saying, is even for those that have something they are doing in there. You don't have anything you are doing in there. Cut it down. Cut down or cut back rather on how often you check your social media by limiting yourself to checking at least two times a day. Download an app that helps you to track and cut down your social media time. Most of you those that don't have anything serious that are doing on social media. Download an app that will help you to cut down your social media time. Turn your phone off at least one hour before bedtime. Turn your phone off at least one hour before bedtime. If you are like, uh, uh, you are anything like me, you may want to study your Bible before you go to bed. You may want to pray for a period of time before you go to bed. You may want to like listen to a message without distraction before you sleep. So at least one hour to your bedtime, log, log off. Just come out of social media. Turn off your phone. If you don't need to turn off your phone, probably because you need to, to listen to a message, you can put it on flight mode while you go to your 
audio and play a message you want to listen to for at least one hour before you go to bed. Maybe you want to meditate. Maybe you want to focus and plan your day. Maybe there is something you, you will want to just channel that one hour to doing. Turn off your phone. She will channel your energy into doing something else one hour before you go to bed. Identify the reason for your addiction to social media. Is it boredom? Is it loneliness? Is it curiosity? Like you are rushing to know what is going on in other people's life, or is it um, uh, um, uh, loneliness? Is it boredom? What is it that is making you addicted to social media? Identify the reason you are addicted to social media and change your routine. Change your routine. Remove social media apps that are really not useful to you. Some of us, we just go through social media endlessly, as I said before. So if there is a social media app that is not really useful to you, remove it from your phone. Like, you, you, know, you are not living for social media. You are not going to fulfill destinies ruling through social media. All right? Do it at the right time. Then look up when you need to. Limit social media use to your computer or web version for people who are chronically addicted. Like my sister, you know, my cousin that I told you about, she was really addicted to it. So if you know your addiction to social media is so chronic that it's affecting other areas of your life, you may just want to limit it to only your, 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 your computer web so that you just go there only once in a while. You can delete and uninstall it from, all, from your phone, all the social media platforms from your phone. If there is nothing serious you are doing on social media and you find out that you are getting addicted chronically addicted to it, you screw up and down morning till night with no uh, significant benefit, then you may consider to do that. Stop, don't sleep with your, your mobile phone by your bedside or close to you. Please don't do that. Yeah, don't do that because you even have some negative effect. We have been seeing, you know, things like that flying around. We read why you should not keep your phone or sleep on your phone. So do not sleep with your phone by your bedside or close to you. Because some of us, when we do that, when we wake up in the morning, the first thing we reach out to is your phone. You see? And then you see, you start your day scattered. You start your day, you know, reading news that should not even be it. You know, the first um, uh, one hour, the first 13 minutes of your day should be used to, you know, relax, meditate, and speak positivity into your day. Even if you are not a Christian, that I would say pray or study. At least you will want to meditate. You want to consider what you want to do today. You want to speak positive words into your day. So let don't keep your phone close to your bedside so that you will not just wake up and then it's your phone. Sometimes when you wake up in the middle of the night, you just reach out to your phone and end up spending hours on social media again. So please do not sleep with your mobile phone close to your bedside. Fasting, smartphone and social media fast. Yeah, you can do a smartphone and social media fast. So you can declare seven days fasting from smartphone and social media and just remove your SIM. More especially if you're addicted, chronic addiction, you can remove your SIM, put it in a simple, you know, touch light phone and start using that while you drop your smartphone and then don't go to social media for at least seven days, 21 days or as long as you can fast. In chronic cases, change your phone to a smaller one. You no, know, it's just what I just said now. When the case is very chronic, please change your phone to a smaller one so that by the time you... You, you use that one for 21 days. They say anything you do consistently for 21 days becomes a part of you. So if you use that one for 21 days, you have already learned how to control yourself around social media. Even when you return your sim to the bigger phone, you might not go back to using social media the way you used to. In conclusion, social media can be more addictive than cigarettes, alcohol, and alcohol. If you are not sure if you are addicted, try to remember when last you went a full day without checking your social media. If you are not sure that you are addicted, maybe all these things I said are still confusing to you. Just remember when last you went a full day without checking your social media. If you have been able to do that, then sincerely, sincerely you are not addicted. <laughs> you are not addicted. You can still control yourself around the use of social media. Yeah, thank you. This is the end of this lesson, social media addiction. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. But going right into the next lesson, where we'll be talking about substance addiction. If you have been addicted to sub any substance or you know anyone that is addicted to any substance, please do not miss the next lesson. The person speaking to us is so experienced and so anointed for this. And I will want you to please listen because this will change your life. Thank you and God bless you.